Hello, welcome or welcome back to Hazel Jane Tarot and I especially want to welcome the over a hundred new subscribers that I've got since this time last month. Um, so if you're just new to my channel, thank you so much for tuning in to watch this August 2021 favourites video. So I'm trying something new this uh, this month. I'm going to try to edit in some photographs. So let's hope that goes well and you're currently watching photos over the audio because the first thing I want to talk about is my visit to Glastonbury for the UK tarot meetup in the middle of August 2021. So this was something I've been looking forward to for over a year. I booked the B&B &B this time last year and um, it was it really did um, meet expectations. The first of all the people that I met um, the whole thing was organised by Simon from the Hermit's Cave and Simon is just as nice in person as he seems on his channel. Um, it was lovely to meet Simon and get to hang out with him um, and the rest of the people who were there as well. Um, so I've, I've linked below the Simon's vlog that he did of the trip and his live from the top of Glastonbury tour. Um, I appear in and out of both of those videos, um, but they principally focus on, um, especially at the beginning um, of the vlog, of Dan from Thorn of the Veil vale and Sandra from The Whispering Whale, well, who um, Simon had travelled with and, and was staying with. So they were both really lovely as well, and I'm going to try to have linked their channels below. Um, especially just uh, want to uh, give a shout out to Sandra, um, from the Whispering Well, who is just the loveliest person. And um, she and I both stayed an extra night after the others had left and got to hang out for a little bit longer. Um, so it was lovely to meet all of them. Um, and there were there were other people there as well. Richard from Longman Tarot. Um, Michelle um, from Michelle Ann Tarot was staying in the same B&B as me. Um, she's also a body painter. And um, I got to see some photos of the amazing work she'd done on the Sunday of the weekend. Um, so lovely people. And to just to meet everybody um, in the Georgian Pilgrim and just hang out and chat. We didn't even talk about tarot that much. Like we did talk about tarot, but not only tarot. To just get to know each other and, and wander about the shops and have lunch and have dinner and have a few drinks and yeah it was just really lovely to spend a weekend with people I'd never met before and just get to know them and hang out with them. Um, Glastonbury as a, a spiritual place was really amazing. Um, the My two favourite places that I visited on that front were the Goddess Temple which is really just an upstairs room that has been decorated. Um, I mean it is a dedicated worship space um, but when you say temple, it maybe sounds like a really fancy building. It's um, it's an upstairs room in the shopping area of the town, but it's uh, down a little alleyway. But the, the space was really amazing. And um, I don't have any photos from inside that space, obviously. But um, yeah, it was it was wonderful. And the other place that really I find very affecting was the Chalice Well, which again is a, a really beautiful kind of goddess-centred um, space in Glastonbury and uh, yeah, we visited that as a group and um, I would actually love to go back to the Chalice Well alone and just have a bit more kind of contemplative time there but it was it was really amazing as well. The shopping in Glastonbury was outstanding. Um, I've already shared a haul video so I'm not going to show you again in this favourites all the things that I bought in Glastonbury and um, the books, the crystals, the decks. Um, well the decks will actually appear but everything else I'm not going to show in this video and um, so if you want to see my Glastonbury haul video I will try to have that linked below. But yes the the range of esoteric bookshops, um, crystal shops, kind of apothecary style shops and clothes shops and oh it was just wonderful. Um, really a great shopping experience. <laughs> um, and the place that I stayed, the Covenstead bed and breakfast, was really special. They have decorated the entire place from floor to ceiling um, with a kind of esoteric paintings and objects. And uh, I've hopefully have been able, you've been able to see some photos of that um, as this, this has been scrolling along. So 
absolute highlight of the month of August was definitely my trip to Glastonbury. Um, for me, it was a short flight from Belfast to Bristol and then a bus, a bus, two buses into Bristol and then from Bristol to Glastonbury. So a really nice trip and um, yeah, fantastic. Probably will have been one of the highlights of the year, never mind just the month. Um, so the decks then maybe I will ha show you some of the decks that I got this month. Um, the deck I principally worked with this month before I do show you those was the Guy and Tarot. So I, again, wasn't really very big on my daily readings and um, daily draws or even my sort of week ahead, month ahead readings. I, I didn't do very much of that. Um, what I did instead this month was I did little readings as and when, like about, you know, if I felt like I wanted to do a, a reading for the day to come or for my trip to Glastonbury, I did do a reading for that about um, what to expect for that trip. Uh, which I must reflect on. I haven't gone back to it. I must go back and look at my notes and see um, what came up in, in that and if it was borne out by my experience. Um, this depicts the chalice well at Glastonbury. So I, I brought this deck with me on the trip and I took it out at the chalice well and gave it a little shuffle. And um, So it, I feel like I've connected this deck a little bit with that energy of Glastonbury. Um, but yeah, this is the deck that I used. I've also used it a little bit at bedtime, just pulling a card to reflect on or if there was a particular question pressing um, in my mind, I've pulled a card and not journaled about the outcome, just pulled the card and had a little bit of a think about um, about the card and, and what it, its meaning is in relation to the question that I was thinking about. So this was the deck that was most in my hands as the month progressed and I was really excited to see um, Sandra at the Whispering Whale um, who I'd shown this deck to when I was in Glastonbury that she has since managed to get a copy for a bargain price because this is the Llewellyn edition of the Guy and Tarot when it's out of print so I was really excited for Sandra that she's managed to get a copy too it's such a wonderful deck so um, I've actually made a long quite a long um, review of the Guy and Tarot and the three different editions available because I have all three because this is my favourite deck. So um, I'll link that below too. So if you're new to the channel and you maybe haven't seen that, um, you might want to go and check that out if you're interested in the Guy and Tarot. So that was the deck I principally worked with, apart from dipping in and out of some of these new decks that I got this month. So the first new deck um, that arrived this month was the Tarot of the Abyss by Anna Turian. So I had pre-ordered this on online and I was very excited for it to arrive. And the art in this is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I don't have a lot of black and white decks. Um, really just, I think it's the Spirit Keeper's Tarot is the only other one. And I don't have any other of Anna Turian's decks either. Um, she also illustrated the Bonestone and Earth Flesh Tarot and the Oracle of Echoes, I believe. I don't have either of those. Um, but this art is just so moving. Um, there, it is quite dark and a lot of the cards have dark backgrounds. I guess it is called the Tarot of the Abyss. But it's dark only visually. I, I don't find it dark in terms of its mood or its um, kind of depictions and themes. And I've used it a little bit, but not very much yet. I have used it for a couple of readings. And yeah, I just, I find it very easy to read. Um, you know, as in, if you know the writer with Smith, you hardly need to look at the guidebook. But um, I intend to give the guidebook a proper read through um, at some point in the future while I've, you know, when I start working with this a little more. Look at that. Six of Wands, the applause and the the ballerina bowing on the stage it's gorgeous so it's a lovely deck um so i will work with it a little bit more and then i'll post a proper review of it but i was delighted to get this and i would love to have um potentially to get the oracle of echoes i don't think it's available at the moment so i'm keeping an eye out for that and i probably will try to get that in the future because Anna Turian's art is just absolutely gorgeous. So that was the first, that's a mass market deck. And another mass market deck that I got this month is the Universal Celtic Tarot. Now I had really hesitated to get this deck. I was attracted to it because the artist um, 
who is Christina Scagliotti, um, had also illustrated the Earth Wisdom Oracle deck, um, which I have. And I like the idea of getting this to pair with it. But initially, um, when I looked at walkthroughs online, I was kind of put off by some of the fantasy stuff in the art. Um, but when I got the deck, I was actually really pleasantly surprised and I'm glad I went for it. So you've got a mixture of um, all the art is like Celtic themed, but you have a mixture of these kind of fantasy images where you have like a dragon. This guy looks like one of the elves out of Lord of the Rings. Um, let me see. So there are a lot of like little sort of elven fairy characters with the little ears. And then some of the cards um, depict figures from Celtic mythology. So this is a, supposed to be Manana McClear, who's the god of the sea. And the landscapes are all very kind of Irish looking, you know, with the, the dolmens and so on. Um, so I can't remember the name of all these characters, but some of them are um, characters from myth. Let me see if I can find some more. There's the Morrigan. really gorgeous isn't it so the art's just really beautiful and initially yeah I thought that like the dragons I, I don't tend to go for fantasy fantasy decks like dragons fairies um unicorns that kind of thing it's not really my cup of tea and you know it's a wee bit smog isn't it like um in the hobbit uh but you know it works narratively for the seven of cups and all these little goblin looking guys um but mixed in among all this sort of fairies and, and mythical art kind of fantasy elements are these characters from from irish mythology sorry that's gone out of focus for example there's cuholan bound to the stone in death for the ten of swords which works really well for the ten of swords and it also reflects irish mythology so uh it's not as um it's not as purely a, a mythology based deck as something like the Celtic Wisdom Tarot in which every card is narratively telling something from mythology, but it uses bits and pieces of it and it's so pretty. Like that's what sort of put me off the deck actually. The Leprechaun, I mean, I don't know. He's not for me. And the Unicorns, but no, it's beautiful. And I actually have found it a pretty good reader and the flexible, um, it's got that really strong, uh, oh dear, half of it's turned the wrong way. It's got that really strong um, smell, like that printing inky smell, which I quite like. Um, you know, like the smell of textbooks from school. And the cardstock is super bendy. And if I wasn't trying to do it live on camera, <laughs> is really good for riffle shuffling. Like it just bends really nicely. So uh, it's slidey, it's matte. Yeah, so I'll do a proper review of that um, at another time, but this is a really nice little deck. Um, and that is from Los Garbeo, and that's a mass market deck as well, the Universal Celtic Tarot. So when I was in Glastonbury, ironically, I didn't buy any tarot decks at all. I bought two Oracle decks. So the first one that I got was this one by Cheryl Yambach Rose, um, which is called Through the Eyes of the Soul. And this is a 2021 um, edition of an older deck um because i saw an older version that was longer cards with a border um in one of the shops in glastonbury um so this i picked up because if you've seen my whole video um there was a bit of a synchronicity between a card that i pulled in the shop that was selling the deck and art that was in my bed and breakfast room so the art in this deck is absolutely gorgeous and I understand the imagery a bit more now having read the book that I picked up, which I'll show you in a little minute, which is a 2010 book about the a lot of the images in this. So, for example, this image is called Maka Lifting the Curse of War from the World of Men. So this is referencing Celtic mythology and, um, and the story of Maka. So they're not all Irish um, mythology, this particular deck. Like that one is showing Stonehenge and combining um, 
ideas of the green man and Cernanos and sort of together in this one image. Um, so the the art style, Cheryl Yambach Rose paints the eyes first, she says, and then spirals out from the eyes and builds up the, the painting that way. So her art um, approach is really unique and all of her art is kind of visionary. Um, I think they call it neo-mythic art in the book. So she's sort of taken mythology and she, it's also very rooted in physical locations that she's visited. So the book has really given me a lot of insight into her approach because initially I wasn't sure if, if this artist's work was going to be my cup of tea, much as I admire the aesthetics of it um, thematically and thematically and so on. I wasn't sure what I thought about it, but look how beautiful those paintings are. So I've been doing card pulls from this um, just for a daily card. And it's so pretty to look at, so it's nice to have one out on display. And the meanings of the cards, um, which are essentially like a, just a short blurb in the guidebook or the keywords on the cards, have been really apt. I find it quite a good deck to read with. There's Glastonbury Tor in the background. So it's all kind of magical, mythical um, art. Um, this card I really like. This um, image is discussed in the book and talks about how... So Cúchulain, um was originally called Shatanta and Shatanta killed one of Cullen's dogs. So Ku is the word for, was the word for dog. So um, he killed one of his dogs, um, his guard dogs, and he then pledged to take the place of the dog. So he became Cúchulain, the Hound of Hullen, and became a great warrior. And here, this painting, here it's called Take Action, but the painting is called The Return of Shatanta or something like that. And where she's kind of imagining him as a modern eco-warrior kind of character and that he's protecting the Leofoil, um, which is on the Hill of Tara and has kind of made peace with this dog spirit um, and coming back to protect the land and so on. So the, the meanings and the thought that's gone into the images is really interesting. Um, so that is, again, I'll save any further thoughts for a proper full flip through and deck review and so on. But this is my ser second Cheryl Yambach Rose Oracle deck for, of the summer because I bought one in July when I was on holidays as well. Um, so I'm fast becoming a fan um, of, and I'd never heard of her work before this summer. So that's uh, Through the Eyes of the Soul. And the other oracle deck that I bought was the Goddess Love Oracle. And this has supplanted the Mysteries of Mary Tarot as my bedtime card pull. So I had been using the Mysteries of Mary Tarot up until the middle of August when I got this in Glastonbury. And I was feeling like it was time for a change. I'd been using it for about three months, maybe. Um, the art in this is gorgeous. This is a Wendy Andrew deck. And... I didn't really know Wendy Andrews art before. Um, I've ended up picking up cards and like other pieces of art in Glastonbury that feature Wendy Andrews work. So this deck is lovely. It has, um, you know, a keyword and a little phrase on each card. Some of them depict a specific goddess and then some of them just depict goddess sort of in a general way. And the guidebook um, goes into each card in more detail tells you the name of the goddess if it's a particular one and then there's a little action point for each card which is a really nice touch in the guidebook um, and some of them like there you can clearly see that's Bridget with the flame um, you know and, and some of these cards are very seasonal in their imagery which I really like so this has been a lovely warm colorful like every nearly every character has like tilted their head in this way or is like embracing an animal like <laughs> you see this sort of a pattern um, in the style of the cards and they're just like a lovely gentle energy. There's Bridget again, um, which is really nice um, to work with. So that has been my fourth new deck. So I've ended up getting two Oracle and two Tarot decks in the month of August. Um, and I am starting to feel like I'm getting to kind of peak deck. <laughs> Um, I, it was interesting I didn't buy any tarot decks while I was in Glastonbury um, of the mass market ones available nothing was calling to me particularly so um, I think my deck buying will be slowing down from here for a while um, so I wanted to talk then about 
music. So some of the music I've been listening to, uh, this has been getting a lot of repeat plays over the last week or so. Laura Veer's The Lookout. I love Laura Veer's. She has a lot of different albums out. She's an American singer. This album's from 2018. Um, so I was listening to that a lot. I've also um, dipped in and out of this, which I picked up for 25p in a charity shop. Um, Texas were very big in the 90s um, and I loved them and had one of their albums back then. So I enjoyed listening to this and um, singing along with some of the songs that I remembered from back in the day. Um, I also have been listening to this quite a bit, but pretty much the, just the first three tracks of this album, um, Smiling and Ablaze and Reasons I Drink are just brilliant. And then I sort of, the rest of the album's fine, but those are the, al the three songs I sort of listen to and then go back to the start and listen to them again. Um, and that's Alanis Morissette's last album, Such Pretty Forks in the Road. And I also um, had a listen through to one of the CDs of this. I think it was the first volume. It's a box set um, of the Nashville soundtrack from season one. Um, one of the, the, there's just so many good singing along, sing along songs on this. I have watched all of Nashville um, at some stage along the way and uh, really enjoyed it. So um, that was getting a play this month. But the thing I listened to the most this month was, and it's not the first time, time you'll have seen this on my channel, is Leslie Odom Jr.'s album, Mr. Leslie Odom Jr., if you're not familiar with him, he played Aaron Burr in Hamilton. So if you watch the televised version of Hamilton or if you have the original soundtrack CD um, of the original cast, he's the guy who's played Aaron Burr and he's just amazing. And this album is sort of his original work, his own songs and um, he's just got the most amazing voice. I mean, he's potentially... I might not be overstating it to say he's one of the best singers I've ever listened to. Like, I just love his voice and his vocal control and the way he can sing in so many different genres. He's wonderful. So I'll link below, um, if I can find it on YouTube, um, his song Remember Black from this album, which is like a virtuoso performance of like a couple of different genres um, kind of all mashed together in the, in this one song. And it's it's fabulous. So Leslie Odom Jr. has been getting the most plays of anybody for me this month. Um, other things, and hopefully I'll be able to edit in some pictures for you. Um, I have finally broken up with Grey's Anatomy. I've got to the end of season 10. I don't think I'm going to watch any more. Um, I did dip into a few other series. I tried watching Shadow and Bone. We watched season one. It was okay. It's sort of aimed for a young adult audience and um, it maybe wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be but it was good and I also dipped into The Nevers which again not quite up to I think I had very high expectations of The Nevers and um, it's all again kind of people fantasy type story um, and it, it was good but I haven't got to the end of the series yet so I didn't love it enough to like totally binge the whole thing all at once. Um, I did get to the cinema which was amazing and I got to see Black Widow at the cinema and really enjoyed that. Um, so other entertainmenty things. Um, books is the last thing I wanted to um, to talk to you about. So I read a few different things. I read Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. This is fiction. Um, it won, um, I want to think the Women's Prize for Fiction or something in 2020. Um, as the title might suggest, if you're familiar with your Shakespeare, um, Hamnet is was Shakespeare's son who died and um, he's notionally the principal character of this story um, which begins sort of the day that Hamnet becomes ill but really the story flashes back the chapters kind of alternate between Hamnet um, and his sister being ill and how that's sort of being managed and then flashes back to his father, Shakespeare, although never named in the story, meeting his mother and sort of their courtship and how that all develops. So it's as a story about Shakespeare and his family. Um, and I think the facts as they're known are included in this. And then the writer has kind of imaginative, imaginatively filled in the spaces. Um, but it's beautifully written. And um, yeah, I did enjoy this. It's a good, real good quality, <laughs> good quality story. It doesn't it doesn't race along or anything. Um, it's not 
high entertainment, um, but it's beautifully written. So that's Hamnet. If you've read it, um, I'd love to hear your views below. Um, I also read, finally, I finished The House Witch by Aaron Murphy Hiscock. Um, this was something I got as a present last year. So um, it was good to finally finish it. I loved this book. It's really, really great. It's full of um, what I'd sort of hoped it would do, which it did do, is sort of help you to imagine your reimagine your kitchen and your home in a more magical way. And... Um, to think about the magical qualities of cooking and you know protecting your family and those kinds of things that, that happen within your home and, and your kitchen and it's full of lots of little spell ideas and um you know for things like cleansing you know creating a, a water mix for cleansing or um you know, things for blessing and protection and so on. There's a lot in this book. I've dog eared a lot of pages and I will be coming back to it. Um so it's a lovely little book. Um, that's The House Witch. I also listened to a couple of audiobooks. One was a recommendation from uh, Emily at Emily's Tarot and Magic. Um, the book is called A Spell in the Wild. And I listened to that on audiobook. And it was a really lovely book where the writer narrating as an audiobook her, her own book takes you through from September through to August through a cycle of the year. And contemplating on her witchcraft practice in each season. And also kind of putting things into context. Thinking about environmental issues or historical issues to do with, with witchcraft. Which I find very interesting and, um, and quite inspiring. So that was a lovely book and a great recommendation from Emily. <clears throat> so thank you for that. If you're watching. And I also listened to Sinead O'Connor's biography, Rememberings. So Sinead O'Connor is an Irish singer and not somebody that I'm a huge fan of. I mean, I, I have seen her perform live once with an orchestra and she was outstanding. I mean, her, her singing voice is amazing. Um, but she's not somebody who I've followed terribly closely, if you know what I mean, um, over the years. But obviously we, you know, you many people are familiar with her from um, issues that she's had with her mental health and where she's appeared in the news. And listening to her narrating her audiobook um about her life and her childhood and um sort of it's quite episodic little fragments of there's a lot of detail of her early life and then it's more fragmented as she gets older and she explains why that is um but it was sort of really interesting of her kind of claiming her own story telling her own story and while it is contradictory and you know a little repetitive at times and so on i did find it really interesting to listen to um the, so that's Rememberings by Sinead O'Connor. And then the last book that I read, and I'll try to zoom up so I can show you it a bit better, was this Art Through the Eyes of the Soul by Cheryl Yambach Rose. And that's the book that goes along with, the, kind of accompanies the um, Through the Eyes of the Soul Oracle deck, but it's not a guidebook to that deck. It's a guide to her art. So this is quite an old book. I got it secondhand and you can see it's signed, which was so exciting. Um, I picked this up in Glastonbury in in a bookshop so there's that um that image that i was just talking about from the oracle deck so she just explains kind of the geographical locations that inspired some of the art she talks about um you know the myths and maybe where she was at in her life or where she visited with her husband to um to inspire a particular card and just that kind of explanations behind the art um, and the pictures of her with her husband and so on. It's really nice to put it into context and to understand the intention behind it. And some of the images aren't <coughs> in the Oracle decks, um, but um, are really amazing to see. So this is the painting that was in um, in the room in my bed and breakfast. There was a print of this. But uh, yeah, so the it's like just a beautiful art book, but there's a lot to read in it. Um, about sort of the, the inspiration behind the various paintings. So it might even deserve its own video. This, If you'd like to see a video where I sort of particularly dive into this book and explain a bit more and show a bit more of the paintings, do let me know in the comments below. Um, so that's Art Through the Eyes of the Soul by Shirley Ambach Rose. And other than that, I just wanted to show you, I got one other new book this year or this month um, it was my birthday in August and I was gifted 
Tarot on Earth by Tom Benjamin um, by a very good friend. So it is, I'm really pleased to have that and um, excited to dive in into it and maybe learning to read a bit with, a bit more confidently with Pips um, in the near future. So if you're still watching, um, thank you so much um, for watching. And if to those of you who are new to my channel, welcome and thank you for being here. And uh, yes, I, I know I've been a little quiet this month um, on my Instagram. I haven't posted as much. I sort of went to Glastonbury and then um, my sort of daily readings and that um, fell by the wayside for a little while. So hopefully I'll be back more frequently on Instagram coming into September and um, I'm looking forward to sharing a few more deck reviews with you in the coming weeks. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you back here again soon. Bye.